confidence, control, knowledge, safety, success, investing, making money, money school. What are stocks and bonds? That's where you'll start and move rapidly into the how-tos of working with a broker, buying stocks and bonds, reading the financial pages, and so much more. Craig Lewis, certified financial planner and longtime money manager, will be your guide through the financial jungle. The goal is for you to gain the knowledge you need to make informed decisions and succeed. And now your guide, Craig Lewis. There are basically two different kinds of options. There are calls and there are puts. Think of a call option as an option to buy a piece of land. If I have a piece of land and you think that you can buy that land and make something of it and then sell it or put up a shopping center, you might say, I don't want to buy it right now, but I want the option to buy it for the next two months. And I will give you a couple of hundred dollars to hold that off the market until then. Then you go and you put your deal together and you say, all right, I've been able to put it together. I'm going to buy your land. If you can't put it together, you say, I don't want your land and I get to keep the $200. So a call option is a right to buy 100 shares of a stock at a given price for a given amount of time. It works like this. If I own ABC at 50, there's two ways to profit if I think it's going to go up. I can buy 100 shares of the stock at 50, which means I pay $5,000 for it. If the stock then goes up to 55, it is worth $5,500, a profit of $500, which is a 10% gain. If instead, I think it's going to go to 55, I'll buy an option to buy the stock at 50, or I'll buy an option to buy the stock at 55. The price at which I have the option to buy the stock is like the option at which I have the right to buy the land, and let's say it's 55. That's called the strike price. There's a lot of terminology in options. The price at which I have the right to buy the stock is the strike price and I have the right to buy 100 shares of that stock. So I'm controlling $5,000 of stock, 100 shares, with an option. Let's say that in this one, it costs $200. That $200 is called the premium. Now stay with me. If the stock goes up and I call it away, therefore the call option. So it's gone to 55. I call it away. I buy it at 50. I can turn around and sell it at 55. Normally, though, the option goes up in value. And let's say the option went up to $500 an option. I have paid $200 for it. It gives me $300 return, which is a 150% return instead of a 10% return. Here's the catch. An option is going to expire in two to three months. If that stock doesn't move in your direction and move quickly, you'll lose your money. The amount you can lose in an option is what you put into it. So if I put $200 into it and the stock goes down, and the option expires, you lose your money. Now, the way that it works is if I buy the option in January that will expire in March, it will expire the third Friday in March. Look at the rotation in your manual. Options don't trade every month. You buy on a quarterly basis. If you have a particular stock, look up the rotation and you will be able to tell which month it will expire in. And if you have a strong feeling about its movement either way, then you will be able to play that movement without putting a large amount of money in it. So a call option is the right to buy 100 shares of a stock at a given price for a given amount of time. If the stock is trading at $50 a share, an option with a strike price above 50 is called an option that is out of the money. If it's at 50, it's at the money. If I can buy the stock at 45 and the stock is at 50, I am in the money. Now, as time goes on, you're going to lose time value. I'm willing to pay a large amount of money for this option if I have six months to go. And it's five points out of the money. I may not be willing to pay that much if I only have one month to go. So there is a time value built in. You want to buy the least amount of time value you can. Let's take a look at this example. With ABC at $50 a share, you have a choice of the 55, 50, and 45 strike prices. The 45 strike price is trading at six and an eight or $612.50 plus commission. Since you're $5 in the money, you have $5 of intrinsic value and one and an eighth is the time value. The 50 strike price is trading at two and a half, all time value. 
the 55 strike price is trading at three quarters, which is five and three quarters of time value, but obviously less money in the bet. Also, the more time you take on, the more time value you have, and if the stock stays the same, or goes down, or even goes up a little, and I start losing that time value, I can actually see my option go down when my stock is going in the right direction, if it doesn't go quickly enough. So I want to buy the least amount of time value and the greatest amount of intrinsic value, so if the stock doesn't move quickly or decisively in my direction, I still have a good chance of making money. If I'm buying a call option, someone has to be selling it. Sometimes the person who is selling is what we call a covered call writer. A covered call writer owns 100 shares of ABC at 50. He says, I'll be happy if the stock goes from 50 to 55 and pays me some dividends during the next three months. So I'm going to give someone else the right to buy my 100 shares at 55 for the next three months. I'm going to collect the dividends, and if it sells at 55, then I'll be happy. If it goes to 60 or 65, then I've lost that appreciation for anything over 55. Here's how it works. The stock goes to 55. That's a $5 gain. But the call buyer had to pay me 75 cents per share. That's a $5.75 gain for an 11.5% gain in three months, and I'm happy. Instead of just buying a stock, I go ahead and pick my selling price and take some premium that otherwise wouldn't be there. If it goes to 60 or 65, then I've given up my top side too. So I've limited my upside potential. I've said I'll be happy with 11.5% for three months, and I've generated more income. If the stock stays the same, I get to keep the $75. If the stock goes down, I get to keep the $75. So it's also a hedge against the declining market. That's covered call writing. Now, a put is the right to sell 100 shares of a stock at a given price for a given amount of time. What that means is I have the ability to put the stock to someone else. I own it at 50, and I think it's going to go down. I will buy a put option at 50 to protect myself, which means if the stock goes to 45, I have the right to put it or sell it to someone else at 50. And that can be like a term insurance policy. For the next three months, I'm going to lock in my selling price. Now, you have to be careful when protecting the stock you already own because there might be some tax consequences involved. The other way I can buy a put is if I think the market or the stock is going to go down. I'll simply buy the put option, and that gives me the ability to sell the stock like selling short without taking on the margin and a lot of the headaches that come from a short position. Also, if you have a short position and the stock goes up real fast, you're either going to be stopped out because you will put your stop order in or you're going to take on a lot of liability. By buying a put, the most I can lose is what I put into it. So if I have the right to sell the stock at 50, it goes to 45, I sell it at 50, and buy it at 45, and I have a $5 profit. Calls are when you think the market's going up. Puts are when you think the market's going down. There's also what we call index options. Now, the index options are a little harder to understand because if I own a stock and I can call that stock away, that is a pretty tangible thing to understand. Now, there are indexes. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is an index. The S&P 500 is an index. If I think the market as a whole is going to go up, I can buy an index option. Let's say I'm going to buy an index call on the S&P 500, and right now it is at 225. I can't go out and buy the S&P for 225. That just happens to be what the cash index is. But I can buy a call on that index. Let's say I buy the 230. The 230 is going to be out of the money. So the S&P needs to go from 220 to 230. If the market goes up, I can sell my option back into the market. I can't call anything because there is no S&P tangible asset to call. So it is all cash settlement. I can also buy a put. I can buy puts and calls in S&P 500 and Value Line and several other indexes so I don't have to be right about one particular stock. I can guess the market as a whole. One of the uses for put index options is I can hedge an entire stock portfolio by buying put options on the index. 